Hey Photoshop fans, I'm Justin Z, and here's another important video about the tools and techniques of masking. Okay guys, so now that we have created a perfectly perfect mask, as you can see here, which is perfect, I'm going to show you a few things that you can do with it. Besides the obvious effect of being able to move it around, like so, and uh, being able to apply it to other images, you can add effects to it. And the beautiful thing about adding effects to a vector mask is that the effects are scalable to the mask itself. So no matter what you do to the mask, the effect will follow suit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press A so I can make sure that the vector mask is selected, then press Enter to make it invisible. Press Enter again to make it visible again if for whatever reason you need to access it. And there's a few things I can do. You can go up to Filter at the top of Photoshop and you can go through all these different effects. They all do different things. They can be applied to this vector mask and they can be applied to other images. But right now I'm going to show you a dialog box that has a bunch of essential key effects and they can be applied to, once again, any image, any layer, but it's really, really cool. It's this little panel down here. It's got that little FX button and it says add a layer style. So I'm going to press that and I'm going to press blending options. Now, all those, all those other options that you saw below the Blending Options button uh, will bring up the same dialog box, but instead of being able to choose all these options, it will automatically set up an option for you. And that's fine, because you can just take it off and do whatever you want. But I figured I'd just start from the top and show you what you can do. So, with options like Drop Shadow, you get, well, obviously a drop shadow. It gives you a shadow over the layer itself and does it behind it. So you get a whole bunch of different options to change this. You can change the opacity. You can make it more apparent or less apparent to make it more realistic. You can change the angle that it's coming from. You can change the distance. So if there's no distance at all, then it shows up completely around the object itself. You can change the spread and you can change the size. You can also change the contour, which creates different effects for the shadow. The one that looks like a triangle is the most realistic one, but each one can have all kinds of cool different effects, and it's really up to you on how you want to use it. Noise will determine how many pixels will show up in the drop shadow, and you can change this to whatever you like depending on what your interest is. Now there's all kinds of other effects that you can do with this. Um, you can do inner shadow, which does the exact, thing, exact same thing as drop shadow, only it's inside the object itself. You can do outer glow, which you can't see right now because the background is white, so I'm going to change that. I'm going to change the background color to black, okay, and then press command delete, and it changes it to black. So we click back on the bottle, we go back to FX, blending options, and we click on Outer Glow, and there we go. Now, make sure Outer Glow is highlighted, that way you can make changes to the effect itself. You can change the opacity, you can change the noise to make it more gradient or not. You can change the color, which I usually recommend because yellow looks a little ugly on this, but white will look just fine. Spread and size. And that's pretty cool, you can do all kinds of cool things with it. And most of these effects have the same options especially blend mode, which gives you all kinds of different options as far as how it will look. So once you're happy with a layer and you want to apply it, you press OK. And as you can see, the effect is still there. And on your layers panel, you get a few different options. You get these little eyeballs that have words next to them. It says effects and drop shadow. Click the eye and you can get rid of the effect. Now you also click the eye next to effects and it gets rid of everything, which is important if the object or image has more than one effect, you can look at the image without any effect at all. Now let's say you had too many effects and you wanted to hide them. There's this little arrow right here that you press, it makes them go away, and if you still want to see it, it brings it right back. Pretty cool. Now there's a couple of quick ways that you can access effects. The first is really simple. Double you double click on the image. Don't double click on the mask, that won't do anything. Double click on the image and you get all these different options the same as before. And also there is a third option to access all these different effects. You go up to layer, then you go up to layer style and all your options are right there. Now let's just say for effect that you wanted to apply this effect to another layer. I'm going to demonstrate this by duplicating this layer. We're going to go up to layer duplicate layer bottle copy is fine we have the second layer there I'm just gonna move it over 
And as you can see, duplicating the layer obviously brings the effects back, and that's not exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm going to show you another trick, um, one that I was going to handle at the end of this tutorial, but we'll do it now. We want to get rid of the effects. So what I'm going to do is click and drag. See how you get that little symbol that says effects down to the trash. Now it's gone, but I want to put it back on there. So we're going to hold the Alt key or the Option key for the Mac, click and drag into the next layer, and there you go. The effect is automatically applied. So those are the basics of the layer style effects. And what you should do is you should experiment with all of these different types of effects and see what they can do for you. They don't just apply to vector masks. They apply to layers, text, all kinds of things, and they are incredibly useful and incredibly easy to use. Check it out. Thank you for watching. Please send any requests or questions about Photoshop to requests at mahalo.com, and please be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe below.